We are on the I record. Finally got it officially. right again. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight's Planning and Zoning Commission at Darien, Connecticut. It's Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019, room 206 at Town Hall. It's a regular meeting, and uh, I'll give it to Kevin. The first public hearing item is. Can you a public hearing regarding proposed amendments to Darien Zoning Regulation CZR 2019 put forth by Pemberton City LLC? Proposal no, you can just go to the, the end line. Oh. Public hearing open 32619, deadline to close. Public hearing is 430 2019, unless extension of time is granted by applicant. We Same with number two. We oh, received sorry. an email from Bob Maslin today uh, agreeing to the continuation of this public hearing to May 28, 2019. That's at 8 p.m. in room 206 at Town Hall. All right. Number two, it's continuation. May 28, Tuesday. Right. Continuation of public hearing regarding landfilling or grading application number 451, Michael Gedney, 145 Old Kings Highway North. Public hearing open 326, 2019. Deadline to close public hearing is 430, 19, unless extension of time is granted by applicant. And uh, yes, in this case, uh, Fred has been trying to track down. Uh, Mr. Gedney's representative, Chris Olson. Uh, Mr. Olson has emailed Fred and said the project is on hold at the moment while the homeowner decides to proceed. Uh, there's two issues here. First and foremost, we believe there's wetlands in the back of the property that they shall work within 50 feet of. And thus, although the wetlands have not been identified by the applicant, the work appears to be within 50 feet of inland wetlands. In addition, uh, Assistant Director of Public Works, Darren Ostefine, sent an email with some comments on the engineering uh, that needs to be addressed, and the applicant has not addressed those. At this point, uh, we'd recommend the Commission close the hearing, and we'll continue to work with the applicant on withdrawing the application and resubmitting once the new materials are in. So we would just need a motion from the Commission. The neighbors were notified last month uh, the applicant's not here tonight, so we'd recommend motion to close the hearing, and we'll see if we can get the applicant to withdraw. If you close it, does, is it automatically by default approved? No, it would be the commission would have to vote okay. one way or the other. I motion to close the hearing. Second. Second. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Thank Did you. I miss number three, uh, we continue. Got it. Business site plan application number 136D, special permit application number 231A, land filling and regrading application 455, George at Work, LLC, Two Squab Lane. Proposal to renovate and expand the footprint of an existing building for the purpose of establishing a new two story quick service restaurant with an outdoor dining area and associated retail bakery on the basement level. Construct a new patio, staircase, and handicapped access ramp to extend through the eastern side of the property from Squab Lane, creating new parking and perform related site development activities. The 0.33 acre subject property is situated on the north side of Grove Street at the northeastern corner formed by its intersection with Day Street and is shown on assessor's map number 73 and lot number 34 with shared parking in lots 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 in the CBD zone. So Jeremy, you want to kick us off with just a quick overview of what we're looking at, and then we'll give it to Amy, for if you don't have one, that's fine. No, that's fine. Uh, you may recall, uh, actually, you may not recall, because in 2006, uh, a related development came through for the Brooks Brothers building and steam and changes to those front properties. And at the time, two squab lane was included in that whole redevelopment. That part of the project was never constructed, so the permit expired. In this case, a new applicant has come along, same property owner, with a proposal in two parts. One is various site plan improvements for additions and alterations to the existing two squab lane building, and some parking stairs, handicap ramp, some other plantings and things, and a special permit request for the proposed uses, which would be a bakery on what you can call either the basement or first floor, and on the upper floor, a restaurant. So those are special permit uses. So we're, the commission's looking at both aspects tonight, the site plan and the special permit. Part of it will be a shared parking agreement with the front uses, extending all from steam 
all the way to the Brooks Brothers and Darian Rowait and Bank. So we're going to look at both aspects of the application tonight. Perfect. Hi, good evening. Amy Sabatakis, Ritchie Law Group. I represent the applicant, which is the proposed property tenant, uh, George at Work LLC. Uh, George Stonis is here, who's the uh, owner of the LLC. Um, and as uh, Jeremy pointed out, the property owner um, is the Dolcetti family. Uh, Mr. Dolcetti's here this evening. I also have um, Andy oh, Sumalidis. <laughs> I should have that one, uh, who's the uh, project engineer. Um, our project architect, architect Tucker Chase, is, apologizes that he's not here. He um, unfortunately became unwell uh, today. So, which hopefully between Andy and I, we can handle the architecture questions. Um, so, I just put up the aerial shot. I think everyone knows where Two Squab Lane is, but just in case, it is the small white building behind where Brooks Brothers is, um, right adjacent to the Darien train station, which is actually where it gets its address from, because that's Squab Lane going through the, the Darien train station. And as Jeremy already indicated, there was an application in 2006 to redevelop this entire area that was approved by the commission. And actually, at that time, the building that was going to be built at Two Squab Lane practically went from property line to property line. The whole, it was a triangular shaped building, as you can see, it's a triangular shaped lot. And it had what was referred to as a monumental staircase that was a really a huge, approximately 40 foot staircase all the way from um, Grove Street up to the parking lot. And so, um, as was mentioned, that um, there was no tenant, that work was not done, so that um, approval has since expired. So we're coming forward with a brand new application for the property. And we're trying to retain some of the best parts of that application, but the building itself is scaled down quite a bit. And one of the reasons being that um, the proposed tenant does want to keep some of the green space that we have existing around there, not really develop the site out as far as possible. Um, I should, however, say that in connection with the 2006 application, because it was all a joint application, there was a joint drainage system and a shared parking agreement. And that drainage uh, retention system was built, and the shared parking agreement was recorded on the land record. So those are in place and still active as if this was a much larger building. And um, Mr. Somalias will tell you when he gets up to speak that he did review the um, drainage that was put in and with today's standards and it is more than sufficient to handle this smaller building and that's being proposed. Um, as I said, the old building was um, 11,592 square feet, so you can imagine how much bigger it was. Um, so we do, oops, um, <coughs> Um, and I, I will point out, I did um, hand out to each of you right before we started some revised um, site plans and architectural drawings. There are really some very minor changes, and I will make sure that between Andy and I, we mention those to you as we go along. Um, as far as the site itself, we retained this idea of a staircase connecting the train station um, and this area. It ha stops now on a outdoor patio in front of the building and then goes down to Grove <coughs> Street. Um, we've added an element of a handicap ramp because I think that that's um, something that was missing from the other design um, since it is very difficult to get from the train station if you're less mobile. Um, and because of the, um, because this is a much smaller building, we now actually have some space on site for parking. So we do have a handicap spot as well as um, seven other parking spots in front for um, the commercial uses, and we've also proposed some stacked employee parking in the back um, and a new curb cut out into the Mechanic Street parking lot, again, only for the employees. That will not be a commonly used in and out. Um, we've just- Grove Street. Grove Street, the, uh, uh, Grove Street, yeah, the Mechanic Street. That's Mechanic Street. No, that's Mechanic not Mechanic Street. Street. Mechanic it's Street's way over, it. sorry about that. Yeah, the Grove Great, Street so, parking so, lot. So can you I point apologize. out, sorry. Yes. Just if you can restate that and point yes, out. Yes, I'm sorry. I will stay. Let me. Let me. Let me redo. Um, okay. This here is stacked employee parking, with exit into the Grove Street parking lot. Again, this in and out will only be for employees. It will not be for um, people who retail customers. The retail customers will have some parking here, but also still have access to the other parking spaces on the other surrounding lots, because as I said, that shared parking agreement 
is in place even though we now have on-site parking. So we now have more parking than we did when the 2006 approval was approved. Amy, while, while you're over there, yes. I'm sorry. Can you just point out where the handicap um, ramp is going to be? Yes. So there is a staircase here that lands on this patio and goes on up. The handicap, you can, this, is a, this is a ramp from Squab Lane to the patio, so you can take the ramp down to the patio or you can turn off and go all the way down. Okay, so it, it, it basically zigzags. It, it yeah. does have to zigzag. Unfortunately, the grade the change grade, there yeah. is eight feet. So you need a extensive amount of ramp in order to accommodate the grade change um, requirement there. Okay, okay. handicap ramps on town property. Yes, um, a, a, a portion, a, a, a good portion of it is on town property. Um, so that was actually where I was going to go next. As far as this um, curb cut in the back and these connections onto Squab Lane, we have discussed those both with staff, with Public Works, and uh, my understanding is that today staff and Public Works met with our first selectman's office to sort of go over some of these elements. And the consensus is that everyone thinks that this is a very good change for the area and is very supportive of it. Um, there are some steps that are going to need to be taken as far as some of these uses of town property, you know, who's maintaining it, liability, et cetera. But that's going to require some communications with town council. So what we're looking for right now is sort of, um, because as I said, there's, there's definitely support to, to, to figure it out. So what we're looking for from you all is, again, support for the plan with maybe, you know, this ramp may get modified slightly, but there will still be this connection. And we will work out those types of details with um, town council, public works, and the first selectman's office. Um, I I said all of that already. Um, as far as the building itself, um, now we'll go to the run drive. Kill me. Um, so we are retaining the existing building and expanding it slightly. The building height will not change. That is part of the existing building. There'll be outdoor balconies, um, this outdoor plaza seating area. Um, it has been fully reviewed and approved by the Architectural Review Board, all the proposed changes. So Amy, the physical structure that, that, that is there now, is that right there? It, the it right? is, it's that, um, there, but we, we're um, expanding it. Okay. Yes, but the, the, main, the main body of the structure is what's okay. there now. Um, the first, the basement floor will be a retail bakery that's just in and out um, to buy, you know, baked goods. Then on the first floor... Can you point out the floors just so there's yep. no confusion about... Yep. So, <clears throat> on this rendering, you see the entrance here. Underneath this balcony is the, the retail bakery. And then I, I should say I've used in my application materials and in my presentation the concept of the quick service restaurant, which is I know something that you're considering in the current uh, zoning regulation changes because I know you're familiar with that phrase. However, because of the timing of when this was filed, this is under the existing regulations, but um, so not the ones that you're considering now, which obviously haven't been approved yet. Hold on, didn't we change the quick service already? Or that's part not of, yet. okay, that, not that yet. That okay, sorry, continue. thank you. However, the concept of yeah. a quick service restaurant, that doesn't really <laughs> matter for this zone, but it's something that you're familiar with. So the idea is this isn't table seated, table seating with a menu, et cetera. It's a, a counter service and seat yourself um, within the restaurant. Um, so I'm going to talk, what I'd like to do is have Andy speak to the, the site, um, and as I said, sort of between the two of us, hopefully speak to any other questions about the building, and then after we're done with that, um, present the special permit criteria for the, the, the uses that we're proposing, because I think it'd be easier to sort of separate those out, if that's okay. Sounds good. Okay. Can I ask one question first? Yeah, of course. Relative to the seating, mm -hmm. there's 46 inside and 22 outside? Mm -hmm. When is it 22 going to be open? Is it 12 months a year? Is it only half a year? Um, well, no, it won't be open when it's, you know, in the in the winter. I mean, it's, you know, the seating will be available if there's a nice day. We can go out there. I mean, I don't think we're going to have sort of strict cutoff times, but it's going to be weather permitting. Kind of like Grove Street. The tables are there 24-7, right. 365, but. Yes. 
So it's an inside People and outside. Using. So that's a total of 68 seats. I Yes, I counted them up a while ago, but that sounds about right. Okay. Go ahead. Good evening for the record. Andy Sumalides from Lantech in Westport. Could you spell your last name for me, please? S-O-U-M-E-L-I-D-I-S. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, just to touch on a few other infrastructure um, things with this building. There's, it's currently serviced by sewer and water, so the infrastructure is there for sewer and water. will reconnect to those utilities. And there is a transformer on site as well. That was part of the original approval of getting power to the site, so we'll be pulling um, service from that transformer for this building as well. Uh, drainage, as mentioned earlier, the infrastructure was put in back in 08. We re-ran the model based on, you know, current rainfall data. So all storms, 2 through 50, um, based on our current proposal, re, um, show a decrease in runoff. Um, so we're exceeding the requirements for that. Um, in terms of some of the grading, the site currently now from the southeast grades up to the building. So essentially what we'll be doing is cutting into the site to get this parking along the front here. Um, and by cutting, we're also allowing to expose the lower level of this building. So that's kind of how you enter the bakeries, through that lower level. So we'll be cutting in and exposing that front foundation facade. Um, the southwest portion of the property where we're proposing this um, six employee parking spaces, we also be cutting slightly to, to create that. And what we've done there is supplement the existing town parking um, separation from our employee parking by planting um, some arborvitae to, to provide some screening there from our employee parking. Um, and the employee parking, you know, one day, you know, one morning in and out, um, night in and out, so it's not heavy traffic. Um, in terms of other landscaping, um, one of the critical trees on site, the 30 inch oak um, by our handicap ramp, we're going to retain that. Um, so this, this wooden um, made out of AZAC wood ramp um, will have sonnet two pilings, um, obviously avoiding the root structure of this tree. There are a couple trees in that vicinity that we do need to take down and we're going to supplement that by adding a three um, Japanese maples on site to bring some color to the site as well. Um, we're also providing some additional, um, the current transformer is currently screened by a fence. We'll supplement that as well with some arborvitae screening to soften that up as well. Um, in terms of site circulation, you access this site through Grove Street. Um, the, the, the Grove Street connects up into Squab Lane and that's where we're proposing this curb cut. We did actually add signage to that curb cut for employee only um, parking as well so so people know not to just pull in there where's the dumpster go so a dumpster maybe you'll see if I jump here. ahead so the dumpster is actually underneath the building underneath this balcony enclosed area not, not the Hold on. let me I'm sorry let That's me just clarify that storage under there yeah so the there is part <coughs> of the and I should have mentioned this before part of the overall site application was the creation of a large dumpster enclosure um, off the that's not on the uh, not on two squad lane it's actually you can see it on the site plan oh, over okay. here yeah so there's a large dumpster there was sized again for this larger building as a restaurant and so what what will happen is there's a, a fenced in area on the basement level yeah. which um, Andy was just referring to that will be sort of during the day where trash and that's where deliveries will come in and out. And then each night they will take the trash out to the larger dumpster, shared dumpster area. So think of it as a garbage dock that will then yes. be cleared. That, that's a good way to put it, yes. Okay. I mean, what's the, what's the, th those two boxes in the foreground there? The transformers. transformers. Those are the transformers these here? Yeah. Yeah, these are the transformers. Okay. That yeah. exist. Is and this shared garbage already in existence yeah, on the property yet? Yes, there's a, if, if that you go out there now, there's a, it's, a, it's a huge Big dumpster area. enclosure, which is, it, it, I mean, if you look at it, you can tell it's clearly oversized for 
what the uses Steve. are that are there right now. If and your, size yeah, for this. to your point, I was just jumped in on Steve, mm -hmm. but I think he was going to make the point that Steam's already using that same Correct. dump. To, so you have a restaurant already. Using. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so so it's, at it's the worst, you'd have to do a frequency update or something like right. that if things got. If, if things got, but it shouldn't get, it shouldn't overflow because it was sized, as I said. Yeah. Again, it was sized in 2006 for what was going to be a much larger restaurant building on this site. Do you know what the frequency of pickup is now? Twice a week. Twice a week. Thank you. So, Thank you. if a third day had to be added, third, third day, day. Had to be added, it wouldn't, wouldn't okay. kill anyone. Got it. Let's go back to something. Go ahead. Can you go back to the um, site plan again? Sure. Uh, I don't mean to be picky, but your abravides that are next to the parking area? You ran out of land. If you look, if you overlay that with the, yeah, keep going to the north, right? If you look at this survey, there's no space there to put them. So there's Which, about five feet between the curbs. Like the plan, the plan shows that the Japanese maples are this. proposed on town property, Correct. and some of the arborvitaes will end up being on town property. Yeah, it, it straddles the property line. Some of them start on our property here and as you work your way west. Right. The parking starts. islands are town. So those be, those right. are shown. So that would planted. that will also have to get approved by the various and that big yes. tree you talked about, that's also on town property. That's not your tree. Correct. Okay. I think it's it's worth noting that the way this area has been maintained historically and Mr. Dolcetti will say it's for the past 100 years, has been this whole area has been maintained by his family. So the sort of demarcations between town and private property owner, because it's a better, more interest to the private property owner, the private property owners have traditionally maintained it. But yes, I agree. I've seen about their cut the grass. I'm sorry? I've seen about their cut the grass. Yes. So we're we're you know we'll, we will need to clean some of this up with an agreement with the town and that's yeah, part that's of all, project. That's, but yeah. it's it, it, that's sort of why some of our plan. I just am sort of explaining some of the reasons some of our plantings are on town property is that that's the way it's always been maintained. Understood, and it's an improvement to the area. And yes, and exactly. Public private partnerships are welcome. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you. The, the last question I had: the, the ramp that goes. Uh, um, Southeast to northwest, is that get a seven foot drop and the other one's got a, a, a shorter drop because it's graduated? This, this little ramp, that's got a seven foot pitch and this one's got the softer pitch? So that's no, it's the opposite. That. It's the opposite. So that, this is a, a walkway that comes, leads up to that ramp and the ramp starts at the bottom of that walkway. Right. And then this is. The, that the wooden ramp, that zigzag. This is a walkway that connects the, the squab lane park to our plaza. So that's that's level. That's pretty level, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, do you have any um, elevation renderings of the ramp? Or, okay, good. The ramp. Well, not necessarily yeah, the, the design ramp. or the you know the design we, rendering. We don't have any renderings of the ramp. Did Jeremy did A or B look at any of that? I guess they nope. wouldn't have if they don't have it. All right, that might be something everybody should see. Since it's going to be on town property, and, you know, um, and the stairwell as well. The stairwell's on our property. Yeah. Oh, it's on, okay. Do you, have, you don't have a rendering of that? But. Yeah, you can oh. see it in this. The ramp's just not Got showing it. Okay, out there. thank you. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's that staircase. Okay. Over there on that side. Because you said it's wood. The ramp would be wood. We're okay. going to do AZEC composite wood, um, unlike Sonda 2 pilings. I guess there's a question. It's a process question, Jeremy. Yes. Do we have ARB look at it after the fact and make it or just so? They already are. According to the letter, they already are looking part of it after the fact. Which says, part? It said we would see the stuff on site when it's brought in because they have to see this, they have to see that. The letter said go to uh, your other commissions and go get all your right. approvals. I think th there's concern by the first selectman about the style of handicap ramp. Yeah. 
Okay, so no doubt about that. Yeah, uh, but the architecture review, which I was unaware of until you just mentioned it, but I could gather that it's right. going to be on town property, so the town has an interest in how it's going to look. Right, and the ARB never looked at the okay. nature of Got the it. ramp. So that might be a follow-up item. Uh, we'll figure that out unless you have a better idea. So, so this is sort of the the, the catch twenty-two, which is where do we where do we start with this? Um, I think that you know what we were hoping was to come to you for approval for the concept of the handicap ramp, and then work with the town on exactly, you know, we think the AZAC material makes sense because that's how we save the tree. There's, you know, there have been a lot of thought that's gone into this, but there needs to be a continuing conversation because it is something on town property. So I don't know if that should, if, if we, if, let me put it this way, we could get a rendering to you and you could approve it and then we're going to, it's going to have to be changed because of a different town body. That's probably a good good process to follow. But you would, but I guess what I was saying is we were hoping to sort of finish with you all and then work with them separately. I guess you'd have to come back for an amendment then? And I guess that's the question, yeah. is it really an amendment if it's yeah. still, if the, if the right. approval is to have a handicap ramp? All right, so I'll be clear. Yes. I probably think it's a good idea for the commission and ARB to look mm -hmm. at the ramp. Okay. And if there's modifications that have to come along by the first selectman's mm -hmm. office or, um, uh, well, theoretically, DPW or everyone something. will see it at the same time. Yeah, so, right. again, if there's small modification, that's something, but mm -hmm. might as well, let's get that done. Okay, uh, so you would like to see that yeah, as part, as part, of, of, as part, of, part this of this application. Okay. Sorry, I, I, you know, this is... No, I understand. We're, we're learning on the fly on this one. Or right, I, I mean, and Jeremy, like I said, yeah. it was a little, con you know, yeah. it's, there's still steps to be taken. Right. Okay. Who required the handicap ramp? It's going to the first floor, right? Uh, no, it's going, well... Well, it's going to. It's going from the parking lot all the way down, so it's it's a great idea. I think it's going from the from the first floor of the restaurant down to the steam level parking lot. It's, no, it, all goes, it's going it goes all, all the way, way from the parking lot. Darian train station parking lot down to the steam. That's right. It's going back and forth, not just correct. Yeah, uh, I the other way around. Right. Yeah. If correct. you were in, if you were, a <coughs> Andy shows that last parking space is a handicapped parking space. The only way for those folks to get upstairs to the restaurant That's a good point. is to get through the ramp. Yeah. There's so no elevator in the building, yeah. so the only way for them to go to the restaurant is to go up the handicap ramp. Got it. All right. So yeah, well, let's get that in the into the design plan. All right, cool. Uh, anything else? Any other questions? I mean, I don't have much more to add in terms of the site or the architecture. If you guys have any questions, I don't. I don't have any. Do you, anybody over here? No. You, you, gentlemen? Okay. I think we're good. So what? Oh, uh, my original. Oh, one other question I had. Sure. Sorry. Uh, electric. Is it underground or is it? How's it? How's electricity getting there? underground? From the okay. transformer underground. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Do we, yep. So I have a question. Do we have to ask if there's gas lanterns outside? Uh, you mean uh, monoblock type stuff? No, 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 like, no, oh. no, like to, for heating or anything? Uh, is that we don't well, have to? You show, uh, oh, sorry, you can point out those, those lights on the building. Sure. Which, in lieu of putting a new lamppost, there's a lamppost on, Fred and I took a look earlier today. Sure, there's a lamppost on that. Squab. I would like to, no, no, I mean, I want to dine there in October. Oh. It's a little chilly. Yes, and it's chilly. So they, Not on the patio. It's a heater, and sometimes they do have oh. a, a light in them, but, or a heater. I feel like that might be something that citizens might enjoy. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. You can get those little So things you're talking about two different things. things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I, we're, I mean, we're totally, so let's so go. Sort of, but they have lights on them. So if there, okay. if there are gas, gas heaters outside, oftentimes they do have illumination. So that would be something that we would need to know, which I think is a good idea where the applicant would be able to use the outdoor space longer. And if that's something we'd have to come back and we'd have to get approved by no. no? the commission could just Acknowledge that that's a possibility. I would like to acknowledge that as a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. But if yeah. there's lights on, okay. there's yes. lights on the building, and that, and I should point out. So that go back to Jeremy's point, if we could. Yes. Thank you. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, also the uh, the outdoor lantern window. that he was discussing right. and the outdoor light. So one of the changes from the and so why I submitted the revised mm -hmm. plans to you is that our original plans didn't show all the on-site lighting. So there is lighting on the staircase itself and then the rest of the site lighting is actually on the building and that's on the, the current plans and you can see it on the rendering as well. Okay. See all the lighting on the building. All right. So I'm not as concerned with the building lighting mm -hmm. but is the stair case lighting trying to match any surrounding area or what's kind of the thought process there? 
Yeah, so these lamp posts here. And the ramp, yeah. That are basically on the four posts of okay. the staircase would mimic the, the same lighting posts that are in that neighborhood, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, so same got... type of question. same type of fixture. So basically the model block fixtures? Yes. Okay. Perfect. And for a uh, handicap ramp that has, um, I guess, sides, do you need <coughs> foot illumination, like lower illumination? I, I don't Whatever is needed for code will provide. Okay. Yeah, so we'll work with the building department so if they need illumination and, you know, traction, the, the handicap tractions at the bottom. Yeah. We'll provide all of that. And again, just to be clear, the use of wood is because you don't want to disrupt the t tree's root system. Correct. Right. Putting in a concrete structure there with footings, um, you would be looking at serious damage. To seriously the losing that tree. Okay. Um, I don't see how you save that tree by keeping that ramp in the same spot and keeping it concrete. Which is not your tree anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Right, but we right. want to retain it. I think we're, yeah. again, we're we're looking at this holistically, yeah. the yeah. entire area, and we want. We to love that tree. Yeah. <laughs> you like the tree, and we we like the ramp, so that's a great compromise. Okay, perfect. Uh, anything else? Um, you want to go over the changes? I think, um, I think we went through most of what the changes are. That's why we added. So from from the original submitted set to the set, the landscaping additions, the lighting additions. <coughs> Um, between these two things? Between what you originally had in your package and what I handed to you today. Okay. So if you look for, if you're looking at architecturals, you'll see the um, lighting changes on the elevations. So if you look at the two, you know, the A3 and A4 sheet, you'll see the changes in the lights being added to mm -hmm. the elevations. And we also call them out now on our site plan as well. He added seven lights to, to page A3, which is the which is a facade. The top is a facade, facade facing steam and facing bridge brothers. You're on the wrong page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting there. You're not an architect, right? Okay. So you got one, two, three, four, five, that's six, seven, correct. On the front facade. Five, six, seven. Right, seven on that one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on that one. Then the bottom one you added five. And that's the facade that faces the back of the building, right? Correct. That faces to west, north. north. Which is the area that the employees will be um, exiting? West. West. This is what that will be. West. West. This, this is the employee parking side. All right. Got it. Got That's it? the only change for these plans. Mm -hmm. Well, for the architecturals, yeah. It was. It was you see got some more lighting on the, neck, the last sheet as well. The A4 Very sheet. Good. Sheet A4 has the lighting as well. The yeah. other elevations, the other sides. Good? Yep. All right. So as far as the thank you, sir. Thank sorry, you. Uh, as far as the use, um, as we stated, and we've sort of already begun talking about the the basement level will be the retail bakery. You can see on that level the the small retail bakery as well as the kitchen space, this outdoor storage area that we've already discussed, which will also be used for deliveries, um, and then there is the um, restaurant. Um, counter service on the first and then additional seating on the second floor as well. Um, the bakery employees were expecting to arrive around 4 a.m. Um, we're expecting the bakery itself not to open until about 7. Um, the restaurant we're thinking may open as early as 5 to, in order to serve coffee to the commuters. Um, that open time is going to really depend on the foot traffic, frankly, so that may adjust a little bit. Okay, so it, just to help me understand the two businesses. The bakery um, is counter service, basically? Correct. It's a retail bakery. Okay. Uh, and then the restaurant is more of it, as you said, QSR. Okay. Correct. Gotcha. It's also counter service. Yeah. Right, it's counter service, it's counter service, and then you go sit down yeah. and, and can eat there. And you can take it out as well if you want okay, to. Okay, but. Got it. Um, 
Uh, I'm sorry, the yes. one last question. Is the bakery doing any wholesale? Um, I don't believe so. Wholesale. No, no Got wholesale. It. Thank you. So there's no seats at all in the bakery? No seats at all in the bakery. The seat, if you want to come in and sit down and have a cup of coffee and a pastry, you're going to go upstairs into the restaurant. And Amy, the, the, yes. the proposed, the kitchen off mm -hmm. of the bakery, yes. is that for the bakery or is that for the restaurant upstairs? It's for both. So it's a shared? Correct. Are the businesses connected? Yes. Okay, got yes. it. It's all going to be owned and run by Mr. Chazonis and his family. Perfect. Um, that makes more sense. Okay. But it's, so it's really Got one it. use. It's just, you know, it's have, that's what. Understood. Two service elements to it. Got Correct. it. Perfect. Okay. That makes much more sense. Okay. Um, as I said, the um, restaurant itself is, you know, seat yourself, counter service, so there will not be a large <coughs> employee presence. We're expecting eight to nine total employees throughout the course of the day. Um, they are, there will be a liquor license applied for and um, bar service, so they are looking to stay open potentially until as late as at one at night and also to potentially have some live music, not every day, but on occasion. Um, let's see, and deliveries we're expecting to come in either before seven or after five, not during the busiest hours of downtown Darien. Um, and, um, oh, and I, I should also mention one thing that did not come up when we were talking about the site plan itself, but as far as the construction itself, um, all of the construction will be from that front, from Grove Street. We're not going to be tying up Squab Lane or the that back connection into the Grove Street parking lot. Or Leroy Ave or anything like that. Guys. I'm sorry? Or Leroy Ave or anything like yes, that. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so uh, to summarize as far as the, um, what we're asking for, um, there is the site plan and landfilling and regrading application, which is mostly what um, Andy has reviewed with you. And then we're looking for... We didn't really go over the regrading, but it's pretty minor, right? Is it's, it, is it's it tied with the nice, ramp, so. basically? And Correct. It's, it's the regrading in order to get the parking. It's really mostly for the parking area. So there's okay. some more significant regrading in the front so that we can level that area out. If you look at the building now, it pretty much goes up in yep. front of the building. And then a little bit in the back where that employee parking uh, area in is. In general, pretty minor. Yes. Um, and then we are, um, because of the regrading that's happened, the existing building part of the building is now turned into technically a three-story building because there's this space in the basement, which is now a full story. So we are asking for a special permit under 656E to allow that to stay as a now a three-story structure. And then a special permit under 654B and C to permit the counter service restaurant and along with the associated uh, retail bakery. Okay, and does any open space have to be provided for that third story? No, because it's the, the third story is because it's the basement. Got it. And it's not going to be used for any retail operations or? Well, the basement is, is the retail. Or, or what about the, wait, so I'm confused. I thought if we had three stories, then there had to be um, set aside it's land. Nice. That was down. I'm losing my touch. I should have known this. No, no, it's this when Amy Sushins came to the commission a few months yeah, ago on yeah, behalf yeah. of Mr. Dalsetti, the, the commission changed, modified the zoning regulations. What do we modify it to? Remind me, please. I'm Such getting... that no open space is, no open space no longer required for that. All right, I'll look at the right. Remind me. Because the, because the, the third floor is a basement <laughs> level, the open space requirement is. I thought if the basement was being used for something, we would have to, but I'll, I'll double check. We'll, we'll have to we'll, double we'll check that, that. Okay. exact wording. Thank you. I have, I have, I have, I have, 654? Yeah, six. Just help me with that, sorry. 650, no, 656 is about the third floor. It's 85. On the second floor? What's that? 875. The square footage. Check the update. The top floor is 875. That's, a, that's, my, that's my problem. My regs on. Outside storage? What are you talking about? So uh, six, 656 um, E4, for purposes of this section, any finished space in a basement shall not require associated public open space plaza or mall. 
However, finished spaces in the basement must comply with the parking requirement. Got it. That's where I'm mixing it up. Yeah. Sorry so about that. So in the basement, that's what it was. If it was a third story above, mm -hmm. then you'd have to provide that screening space. Thank you. So, and yes. so we're, we're good on the parking requirements. Wait, why are you, are you called up? Mm -hmm. Right. In in situation of Brooks Brothers, Brook, that basement space mm -hmm. was underground. It was a basement. Mm -hmm. This basement is not that grade. Mm -hmm. It was well, no, it still qualifies as a basement because it it's only one side of it that is open. Okay. But it qualifies as a story, but it's a, it's a story, but it's still a basement. All right, well, we're going to have to keep this open, so we'll look at that carefully okay. and we'll discuss yeah. it but during. The, okay. Just to finish, since yeah. the last sentence did yeah. refer to parking, I just think I should say again yes, that again you. we do have the shared parking agreement for a much larger building that included no on-site parking, so we're we're definitely in the clear as far as the parking requirements for the area between the shared parking room and the on-site parking that we are providing. And that's not even to mention the Grove Street parking that was opened okay. up since to uh, short-term shop work parking, exactly. if you will. Right. Um, wait, I, okay, go ahead. Two questions. First one, relative to the parking, the application, I didn't see anything in the application that said how many parking spaces were in that lot. That's between Brooks Brothers, Steen, and mm -hmm. you, do you know? I don't. There's 14 on site, and mm -hmm. it doesn't say how many in the other lot. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Do you know how many spots are in the, the Brooks Brothers steam, the lots that are all part of the shared parking agreement? It's not including the new. It's on, it's on a survey. It's not even more. It's about 60. Yeah. Can we? Can you just, when you come back, mm -hmm. also define all this parking spots? Well, spaces. no, because again, the shared parking bank. agreement includes bank. Darian Roy and Bank. Uh, guys, guys, come on. <laughs> sorry, sorry. The, the shared parking agreement doesn't just include the Dulcetti properties. It also includes the Darian Royton Bank property. You may want to include that in there. Well, the shared parking agreement is part of the record, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. And, and, and as I said, the, the, so, but, you know, that was reviewed and approved in 2006 when we did not have the additional Grove Street parking open for uh, retail visitors to downtown Darien. So it was considered sufficient parking for a much larger restaurant at Understood, that time. Understood, but things like um, the, the, the hairdresser place and all those other buildings weren't there either. For grocery, you're talking about bakery. grocery. You're talking, but you're talking about, talking about the grocery parking. I'm talking about the shared I, parking I agreement on and of, in and of itself is considered enough parking for these four buildings. Got it. Okay, so okay. just if you could outline mm -hmm. the parking, the number of seats. Just so we can ensure that it's sufficient. Okay. The, this is my the next, next additional question. I'm looking at the plan for the first floor restaurant. Mm -hmm. There's a hostess thing, right? right? Mm -hmm. I've never seen a quick service restaurant that's got a hostess in. What happens if they want to change it to waitress service at one point? Well, if we change the 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 use of the the restaurant that would be a change in and use special permit right. would have to change why but why is there a host system that's a, the, i mean that's i'm trying to count up the seats i couldn't yeah. get to the number of seats that you got to on here i mean you're still going to have the, oh so that's why i went where, to let me just maybe you can tell me what you're looking at there's 68 seats mm -hmm. right to the right yeah right there i i mean it's not a necessary element. I think that, you know, there may be times when you want to have somebody out there who can help direct traffic, you know, if it's, or again, we're going to have, a, we may have special events there, so you want to have that space available, but that's not a, something that we're anticipating having a hostess there at all times. So there's no waitresses, no waiters, there's no waiters. No, there, well, yes, I mean, there are, no, there are no table surface table waitresses service. and waiters. There are, you know, think about Cafe Nero, you know, you've Perfect. got, there, there are employees and there are people that will help clear dishes and things that people right. leave behind, but it's, but not, it's not a full service restaurant. Let's correct. just make it clear. Okay. Right. So I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around it and I'm very interested in this. So until it's going to be open from 5 to 1 a.m. Correct. Okay. So from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m., mm -hmm. the same restaurant is serving all of us. So I need to, what would be an example of a quick service restaurant mm -hmm. that I could eat at at 5 a.m., 5.30 mm -hmm. and have an egg sandwich? And then I can listen to a live band until 1 a.m. Because I am trying to find an example. Can you I help me mean, out? I mean, there's a lot, like of a lot of coffee houses up mm -hmm. in Fairfield and New Name York City. And that I need to know. I, like, I need the visual. Excuse me. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't, 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 <laughs> I, I'm not going to no. name a restaurant for you. I've been <laughs> I mean, to a coffee house in Fairfield <laughs> right. and also in New York City that 
you know, they have restaurants. I, can't I mean, it. it's not it's not Go uncommon. On to have a to have it to okay, have. Well, if you give me them, I'd love to. I'm just trying to right. look for a visual. So I, I think that you got a week to look at least. Right. I, I think that the 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 best example that I personally can think of in Darien that's similar to this is something like you know Roost or Cafe Nero right now, but I don't know how late either one of those places are open personally. I mean, there's However, Starbucks that sell and drinks now. Starbucks and Starbucks stays open nice much stuff. later. I think that. You know, the fact that we don't have one in town is actually a positive. This is something new for our community and something that I think will be a, a nice addition to have a place that's more casual. You don't have to go in and buy a $20 glass of wine, you know, to be able to sit down. It's, you know, it's it, because of the way that it's being run and operated, it will be a more casual um, type of environment. But, you know, it's almost as if, frankly, the, the best example maybe I can think of in Darien is if you combine like Espresso Neat and the bar area at, um, at uh, Melting Pot. You know, how those two areas both use that outdoor courtyard and you're there for coffee in the morning and you're there for live music and drinks in the evening. It's that, that sort of vibe we're going to have all in one, one space. Synergistic might be the word that you might want to use. I like that, synergistic. I don't get to use that very often. <laughs> all right. Um, Anything else? All right, so we see some, Jeremy, you look like you want to speak. No, um, Amy and I talked earlier today uh, with Dad about the employee parking area. Uh, you can see from the plans, part of it's asphalt, part will be grass pavers. Mm -hmm. And that we talked about some kind of change at the entrance in terms of Belgian block, I think was Dan's idea, to differentiate so people don't confuse it with the town parking. Right, and, and we added the addition, we'll also have an employee only And that has sign. a sign as well. So we talked about that this morning. Um, okay, so the open items are number of parking spaces. You already have the parking agreement mm -hmm. in the record, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, just uh, double check the number of seats. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll, just uh, verify with staff your interpretation of the regs because mm -hmm. I'd like to just kind of explain specifically, mm -hmm. you know, how this fits within the regs, the new regs. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't remember exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so the, you're talking about uh, 656E yeah. as amended in 2018. Yeah, about the you know, third right. floor use and providing open space um, mm -hmm. and how that fits in. Did I miss anything? And I think you want some sort of um, conceptual drawing oh, yeah, right, right. of the handicap ramp. Yes, please. Right, right. Uh, one, just real ahead, quick, yeah. Amy, do you know the approximate square feet of the existing building and what the what the square feet of the new structure is going to be total? The new structure is 3,725 square feet total. Mm -hmm. Mr. D, do you know what the square footage of the existing building is? It um, might be on the... Two floors about 1500. Yep. The, the two floors oh, of the existing building are 1500. Okay, so that, sorry, the two floors in the existing building are about 1500. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you, there is an existing site plan. <coughs> um, if you, so I think if you look at the existing site plan, you can see that the, the existing building is sort of a long rectangle. So the addition to the building is um, on the west. Uh, west side, and then you know the plaza that we've discussed, and the and the balcony on the other side. So. Thank you. Not that this is relevant, but it might just be great for comparative purposes. Mm -hmm. If you could pull up, or maybe we could pull up from the old file, just the old, you know, yeah. footprint of the building in comparison to show the size differential. That would also be neat. I think so. And, and actually, I would I would request, um, and I meant to say this at the very beginning, that the 2006 approval be made part of the record for this <laughs> application. Almost. Almost. <laughs> for the record, the existing building footprint is 1,543 square feet. Mm -hmm. I can't no, I don't yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like some actual building footage. That might be wrong. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else, guys? Anybody? Anybody? Mm -hmm. So we're keeping this open, right, John? Yeah. Uh, what do you got a date? Yeah. Anything in a week or two to pull things together? Uh, the commission next meets on 
uh, not next week, but Tuesday, May 7th, and again on May 14th. Let me see. Oh, oh we sure. get another week off. Is that right? Yeah, yeah so not next week, but yeah. Tuesday, May 7th, or Tuesday, May 14th. There's time for this application on either night. Dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. <laughs> We can we can certainly be ready by the seventh if you'd like to do it that way. The fourteenth is the continuation of the, um, the regulation, changes. The regulation yeah. changes. Whatever works for your schedule. I mean, you're, you're as I said, if you're meeting anyway on the seventh, we can be ready by okay. then. We may as well come in then. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's two weeks from now. Yep. Awesome. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, does any, should ahead. I just anybody in the public want to comment on that? Seeing none, you want to announce the continuation again? Continuation to Tuesday, May 7th, 8 p.m. in this room, room 206 of Town Hall. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Uh, public hearing item number four, Coastal Site Plan Review, number 340, landfilling and grading application number 454, Michael and Teresa Casolo, one Toganique Beach Drive. Proposal to construct a new pool, spa, and terrace and perform related site development activities within a regulated area. The 1.01 acre subject property is located on the southern terminus of Tokini Beach Drive at its intersection with Butler's Island Road and is shown on Assessor's Map 67 as lot number 84 in the R1 zone. Uh, in this case, the uh, Wilder Gleason represents the applicant. Mr. Gleason notified the neighbors. Uh, they did go to the Zoning Board of Appeals within the past few weeks. That public hearing before the Zoning Board of Appeals has been continued into May. So I would recommend the Commission continue this to May 28th, which would give the applicant time to obtain the necessary variance, or if needed, revise the plans accordingly. So uh, we have spoken to Wilder Gleason about that. So if you want to continue it to Tuesday, May 28th at 8 p.m. in this room, Sounds like, fine, sounds like a good idea. Do a, do a vote? We don't have to vote on that, do we? Um, motion to continue. <laughs> Second. No, I need one, sorry. My motion to continue the hearing to May 28th. Jim, I saw a second. Second. All in favor? Yes. All right, great. Fine. Thank you. Item number five, lengthening and grading, application number four. 53 Jason Parker 28 Hillcrest Avenue proposal to regrade the rear yard and construct a new stone retaining wall to create a level yard and perform related site development activities. The 0.39 acre subject property is located on the west side of Hillcrest Avenue, approximately 230 feet north of its intersection with Middlesex Road, and is shown on Assessor's Map number 27 as lot number 30 and 31 and is located in the R13 zone. One of you guys want to go to launch on this one? <laughs> give us a we use a different word. Sorry. Sure, Just this give us is a, a summary. This is a proposal uh, for a residential property on Hillcrest Avenue. Uh, the backyard is very small. There's not much usable yard at the time. It slopes, and the applicant is here to do some degrading to give them a, a small, usable, flatter area in the backyard uh, by creating uh, some retaining walls. And is that the, uh, I'm sorry, we got some uh, emails you forwarded. Right, there was yeah, an there email was, just, uh, go ahead, Fred. There was some correspondence from uh, the applicant's neighbor this afternoon uh, that was submitted for the record, and we distributed that to you earlier via email and hard copy this evening. Um, we also distributed comments from Darren Ostafine regarding uh, some drainage analysis. He, he took a look at the drainage and was of the opinion that the proposed modifications to the lawn would result in similar drainage patterns as what, um, as what exists out there now. The neighbor's main concerns were around potential runoff from the property, and uh, it's our opinion that uh, or Darren Ostafon's opinion that, like I said, the, the proposed modifications maintain the existing drainage patterns and wouldn't be, wouldn't be anticipated to uh, create any additional or added volume of runoff from the site to adjoining properties. Um, can I just mention the application? It says that the regrading will improve the runoff. That's the street that floods? 
There's an ice patch at the bottom of it. Well, currently what so you have is... Right, your application's right or the Darren's right. Well, they're making it flatter. So that would slow down, and that's what Darren talked about with Fred and I this afternoon, that by making the property flatter, it will slow the rate of the runoff. There's no new impervious surface as part of this. So the amount of runoff is the same. It, the amount is the same. It will just be a little slower. Velocity will be the slower. The velocity will be slower. Lower. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the regrading will improve the runoff for a slower velocity. Yes. And the grade slopes away, for, it, it currently slopes away from Hillcrest Avenue. Does. So if there are any flooding issues or reoccurring flooding on Hillcrest. Go down to the street further south. Right. <laughs> right. All right. Great. Sir, yeah. please introduce yourself. And I'm uh, Jason Parker. I am the property owner and resident at the at 28 Hillcrest. I have with me George and Dan Monaco, um, who are the contractors for the project. Um, so much as you guys just discussed, uh, really the genesis of the project is that the backyard is super sloped. Uh, we have a young child and there's not much usable land there. Um, so there is a loosely stacked retaining wall on the top of the backyard um, that you guys should see on the distributed drawings. Um, that was in place when we purchased the house in September. Uh, kind of haphazardly put together, so uh, we'd be proposing to rebuild that wall properly um, and then um, rebuild at a lower retaining wall to be able to cut and then fill to the bottom of the yard. Uh, we would need some additional fill to the bottom of the yard due to the slope, uh, and they can provide you numbers on that. Um, but that's really it. So the side yards, um, as it abuts the neighbors, would be, remain untouched. So we would blend within the retaining walls to the current grade um, side yards. Uh, I'm just trying to see which way it goes. Uh, sure. Because this is 87, yeah. that's 94. So it goes that way. Got it. Okay. Should we cut 94 down to actually? You want to cut 94 down? Well, no, the top wall. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, I guess we're trying to just envision what the just the project, if you will. So yep. looking at the plans. So that the um, top wall, where the wall sits, is currently 94 and a half feet. We would propose bringing the bottom of the wall to 93 feet. Oh, okay. okay. And then the bottom retaining wall would sit on current grade at 86 feet, um, and we would backfill to. 89 feet roughly, so the three foot wall backfill under the, the coping on the wall. Okay. I don't understand. Oh, you understand? I don't. So the flat, the play, the play yard, if I can call it that, sure. goes from the back of the house, which is 94, down to the to the 87 or 86. No, just to 89, because they're going to fill that part. Oh, yeah. 86 up to 89. So there'll still be a sloping yard. It will go from 94 down to 89, whereas now it goes from 94 down to 86. Correct. That's not oh, what okay. this says. I got to go 94 to 89, yeah, back up plan. to 90. Right. It, it's tough to distinguish the existing grades and the proposed, but uh, if you think of the top of the wall is 89, so this, so this is proposed right. 90 here. Oh, there we go, 91. And then proposed 91 line. And then 90, okay. Proposed 92. Very, very uh, One of the trick okay. is there is really no proposed 93 because the bottom of that, I'll call it new upper wall, will be at 93. Correct. So there is no proposed 93. So if... If you will, I'll stand corrected. The, Up it, here, the, I'm sorry, the, that's where he's talking about that. The land now goes from 94 and a half to 86. That's it will go from post, 93 to 89. Okay. So there, it's. Yes, right. thank you, Cut Jeremy. Perfect. Right. Perfect <laughs> visual. So that's up where three we're feet at the bottom. Example. Bottom, uh, lower a foot and a half at the top. Gradual. Okay. Down. If you could just have your expert tell us. How much fill is coming onto the site? That would be helpful. Good evening, uh, Dan Monica, GM Landscape. Uh, so basically, as you guys mentioned, we're going from 94 and a half down to 93 at the top wall. Yeah. So it's about a differential of a foot and a half. And the lower wall, we're going from a current elevation of 86 to 89. Um, 
Surface areas in the cut fill region are about equivalent based on my numbers. So you're looking at a differential of about a foot and a half difference times the area that's, that's, that's your fill amount. Um, to be noted here is that there is, there is going to be a significant amount of ex excavation for the footing of the wall. And in addition to that, there will be uh, a clean gravel uh, drainage around the whole in interior perimeter of that wall, which is going to offset the amount of uh, the amount of fill required. So we're estimating somewhere about one triax worth of fill. Uh, uh, one truck. Triax. Triax. Yeah, 20, about, th about yeah. 20 yeah. cubic yards. Okay. Yeah, in that realm. Okay. Wow. Hey, it's pretty subtle. Yes. And what drainage system are you putting in for this? Andrew? Um, it would just be... Sorry, if you could just come up to the mic. Sorry. Thank you. It would just be we're proposing just weep holes in the wall. Um, so gravel inside and then we pull so like flow naturally as is, not collecting it and redistributing it in one direction or another. Right. Okay. Right now there's Coltex on both sides of the house. Those were installed when the right. house additions were done. Right, and they, they serve as, it's just drainage coming off the top of the house. Got it. So no additional water's coming off the house into the yard. Okay, so typically it's, it's good to see yards get flatter because then you reduce the velocity of water and flow and... Um, the impact to the surrounding neighbors based on their comments is, in my mind, little to none to beneficial because you're going to reduce the velocity, right? Right. And the, it's actually what Fred mentioned is actually not the downhill neighbor yeah. who emailed the concern. It's the neighbor to the, okay. to the side. And as Mr. Parker mentioned, there is no regrading within 15 feet of the side, and care will be taken to make sure that the the direction of the water isn't changing. It's all going to continue to flow towards the back and not right. towards the sides. Right. Great. Okay. This uh, this says proposed drainage system proposed three coltex three unit coltex. Is that existing or is it that's as, so the as built for this was as the builder this submitted it proposed, last year. This says proposed. No, no, no. But it, this is the original as built. Correct. For your home. As submitted by Fox Hill. That he's using. Right. Right. And then they overlaid the as built with the new plan. Correct. Yeah, well, these are, Correct. These are marked wrong. No, no. This <laughs> That's why it's confusing. Yeah, That's yeah. where the elevations are confusing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If, if he had said proposed grading plan, it would have been clearer than saying proposed plan because the call texts are there. Right. So the call texts are yeah. currently in place. Got it. Yeah. Instead of drawing up a whole new plan, they just overlay the regrading on top of that. Got it? Yep. All right. Any other questions? <coughs> no. Uh, the erosion controls are shown in the plan on the silt fence here. Did you estimate about a week to do the work? Two weeks? Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, the uh, work. Probably take the. Probably start to finish three weeks. All right. The, from the. Can uh, you repeat that? Yeah. Me talking out. So the proposed construction plan is about roughly three weeks. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? All right, anybody here to talk about this application? Seeing none, can I get a motion to close? Motion to close. Can I get a second? Mr. Rand is second. All in favor? I hope you should get to the back door. Thank you. Uh, number six. Okay. Flood damage prevention application number 395, Dylan, David and Jill Rowe, to Phelps Lane. Proposal to install a post and rail fence with tricky wire attached within the rear yard to enclose the property and perform related site development activities within the regulated area. 0.37 acre subject property is located on the south side of Phillips Place, partially within the city of Stamford, approximately 140 feet east of its intersection with Oakdale Road, and is shown on a sister's map number 25 at lot 17B in the R1 3rd zone. Kev, I think you said number 395. It's number 394. I apologize. No, it's I'm all good. Fired. Just for the, uh, the record. Right. All right. So this seems like pretty simple fence in a flood zone. What's, what's interesting about this, uh, Fred and I talked to Darren Ostefine of Public Works today. We've been, Fred and I have been working with Mr. Rowe. Uh, this is a split rail fence with wire meshing on it, <laughs> which is in the flood zone. Yeah. And we referred this to DEP to make sure that uh, this isn't going to cause flood concerns for the state. So they, they sent an email back saying, we understand and, uh, if it was a significant structure or something like that, we'd have concern. We understand homeowners' desires to put up such fences, 
And as long as it's not stockade or going to block water flow right. or impact water on the neighbors, DEP was okay with it. This is the perfect fence for that, I would imagine. Right. And Mr. Rowe has been working with us on designing yes. the fence accordingly. Uh, <laughs> this got EPC approval uh, okay. recently. And Darren notes that, yes, it's good that the fence stays open, but if anything gets in the mesh, leaves, debris, it, yeah. it'll have to be cleaned up, so that's important. Um, now, one thing to note is the fence is not only in the flood zone, the very back of the fence, which is parallel to the Neroten River, is in the floodway. So most of the fence, which runs up the side of Mr. Rowe's property, or which will, is not in the flood way, but the back portion is. If it were to be moved out of the floodway, about 10 feet, it would in essence be in the middle of his yard. So just wanted to point that out to you, that part of it is in the floodway. Usually we don't let development occur in the floodway. But again, you're, having a, you're creating a fence parallel to the river that is going to be open. Okay. Water will flow in and out of it. One clarification, floodway versus flood zone. The floodway has velocity associated with it. Would have more velocity. Okay. In this case, if uh, we were at the site today, the Neroat River is six, seven feet below in Roughly terms of elevation yeah. where this is. So it's not right up against it. Sure. It's right. It would have to be a pretty fence. significant flood to it impact would have to that be fence. A pretty big fence. And he's trying to keep his soccer balls from going into the river. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. called spade spade. <laughs> yes, it's soccer balls, dogs, whatever. Yes. Dogs so, children. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Um, so if you, do you want to say anything else, sir, or did um, we just cover it pretty yeah, much? Yeah, well? David Rowe, property owner. Uh, not much, much more to add. There is a sewage easement uh, that runs parallel to the river as well, so we're making sure we put the fence in front of that to make sure there's access if there's ever okay. anything he's doing. Okay. It's pretty simple. We just wanted to make sure we do things the right way. Great. No, thanks. Normally somebody would throw put the fence up. Put the fence up and <laughs> right. wouldn't care. Can I put one question to Mr. Yes, please, Rowe? sir. Uh, I was there yesterday. And there's a house which is number six on the mailbox. It's and number two on the mailbox. He's two. I know that. Right, right, right. But I saw a house with number six. Okay. <laughs> and next door there was a house on the corner. Yes. With a number on the other side that said 75 or something. I yeah. can't remember. Where are you? So if you, if you to go into Phillips Place... Yeah, uh, you've got the corner one where, where there's a pile of mulch at the moment that's just been dropped off, which you may have seen. Uh, and there's a driveway going into that corner house. We're the next one down. It's, a, it's got a number two on the front door and a two on the mailbox. Oh, I missed it. Sorry. We <laughs> <laughs> tried. We tried. All right. All right. Anybody here would like to speak about that application? Seeing none, can I get a motion to close? Motion to close. Any second? Ms. Rivas got the second. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Enjoy your fence for these soccer balls. Yes. <laughs> uh, Moving to the general meeting. Yes, general, please, sir. General meeting item number one. Uh, deliberations only regarding the following amendments to the zoning map, <coughs> CZN number 2-2019, put forth by the Darien Planning and Zoning Commission. Proposal will amend the zoning, Darien zoning map to rezone the following six properties. 273 uh, West. Yeah, okay. we'll, go we'll go through every one. Individually. Individually. Okay. And my request to Jeremy as we do this is, yeah, I think we made it pretty clear we're going to take the property owner's lead on this whenever Correct. we had one. Um, so I think Jeremy uh, sure. said that we get... Right. 273 West Avenue, you may recall that's the property that's just north of uh, the Palmer's redevelopment and just west of People's Bank. Uh, we heard from the property owner last, last hearing that she does not want her property to be rezoned, uh, that there is, she believes, there's potential for People's Bank mm -hmm. to buy it or yeah. whoever that is. Some other be. commercial. So okay. in this case, the homeowner was opposed to the rezoning. Okay. Does anybody have any other comments around that, or are they fine with what the homeowner would? I, I have a note that we that this was, that, that was continued. No. It was a long the first time ago. Yes, she wasn't here. you're right. She was in Florida, yeah. and she came okay. back. Okay, yeah. Yes, you're right, right. Jim. So that's a no. Yeah. That was not. I mean, that's oh, a thank you. landowner's yeah. no. Correct. She came back and, okay, 1973 Boston Post Road. 1973, if you may recall, it's the, uh, the block extending from Mama Carmelo's, Papa Joe's, Allstate, that property. It, the rezoning involves the back left corner behind what used to be the Puritan. Uh, rezoning a small portion of their parking lot 
So the NB zone would not be 100 feet from Boston Post Road. It would match coincident with the rear property line. Uh, I don't recall receiving anything from no either the comments. neighbors or the property owner. Yeah, I didn't have any either. So That's fine. my thought is yes. Anybody have a different thought or agree? No, I think it's fine. Yeah, okay. Six Rings End Road. Six Rings End, you may recall, we heard from the property owner who sent a letter say, uh, saying, yes, I've recently put in a number of uh, improvements to my residential structure. I would be willing to have my property rezoned to residential. And then the neighbor's uh, property owner, Mr. Tibbetts, came to both public hearings saying he was opposed due to its potential impact on buffer requirements on his property, which is the... Uh, I believe the Christian Science, Christian Science Reading Room. Reading room yeah. Yeah. So ah. this is interesting. Who trumps? Um, well, I, well, I, w I would say um, as is trumps, you know, leave if well you enough. have a dispute between the two. Leave well enough alone. Leave it well enough. That's so another way to put it. Yeah. You agree too? I do. Yeah, okay. So that would be a no. Okay. 164 Alkings Highway South is the property at the corner of Cross Street and Old Kings Highway South. You may recall the property owner, Mr. Constantinus, was opposed to the rezoning of his property. In addition, Mr. Latrenta, who owns the uh, office building to the, I'll call it the north, was also opposed. One of the neighbors who lives on Old Kings Highway South was in favor of the rezoning. But you may recall Mr. Constantinus was adamantly opposed. Yes. Um, so that is the owner. And then and then with our precedent, that would be a no. Yeah. Okay. 55 Boston Post Road is TD Bank. It's a corner of Boston Post Road and West Norwalk Road. This is the proposal to rezone the northern portion of the property, which now has a conservation e easement over most of it. If I recall, some neighbors were concerned but when it was explained that there's an easement there and it's not likely to be redeveloped. He was receptive to the idea. He was fairly no receptive. No word no from the property owner. Okay, so uh, that would be a yes. Mm -hmm. The last one is 1441 Boston Post Road, the Darien Library. Uh, right now that property is split zoned and it's also in the municipal use overlay. That property has been developed according to the municipal use overlay and it is likely that any future development of the property would be consistent with the municipal use overlay, which is uh, more liberal, gives them more flexibility than the underlying zone. So the change really would have no effect on the library. They neither sent a letter in favor nor opposed. But you did inform the library. I've met with them a couple times okay. since then. I would say yes. I, I, say yes. I agree with that it's worth. Okay. That's worth uh, one sixth of the uh, okay. decision. Yeah. So we can <laughs> we can draft a resolution on these for our next meeting, if you wish. Hey, Jeremy. Yeah. Inside this pack that you gave us, oh, it's the same one twice. Inside this pack that you gave us, it's the one I will skip on. There were a couple when the commission. Road. There were a couple when we met down in room one nineteen that we went through that we discussed. Putting them out, propose, okay. put forth, and not put forth. Some of them fell by the wayside for a variety of reasons. Okay. okay. All right. So we got three out of six on that. You guys write up a resolution. Yep. And, okay. Next general meeting item, sir. Special permit number 35C, site plan, coastal site plan review 79B, flood damage prevention application number 68B, Neurotin Yacht Club Inc. 23 Baywater Drive, request for extension of time to complete phase two improvements. Right. Uh, you may recall in the Roten Yacht Club was a total redevelopment. Uh, they received a certificate of occupancy in March, I believe, and that covered everything. It's There are a number of mi very minor improvements that remain to be completed, uh, such as relocation of dumpster enclosure, some other items which we consider to be pretty minor. What they're asking for is an extension of time to complete those minor items, which would give them time to complete them. Uh, so if the applicant has asked that since the work is not likely to be completed uh, for a while, they ask for a one-year extension to 
to allow these minor. How about we go to January 1st, 2020? Okay. That would be uh, eight months from now. I don't see, if they're minor, I don't see the need to go a year. Would everybody agree with that? Do you think they're going to start construction once the club season ends? Yeah. And get it done in the they're, fall? They're, I mean, they're pretty minor, right? Relocation of dumpster and closer, possibly some... Belgian block, curbing load, tree pits, and entrance with deck, mm -hmm. walkway, plane Paper around crosswalk. one area. It'll have to be done before the one January. I bet you Nickel they do it in the spring. Why aren't they doing it now, then? Because they ran out. Of, this says they ran out of money. It also says they're in mediation with the contractor. Oh, I no, that's it. different. No, it's a different deal. Oh, sorry. This says a, it said budgetary. Oh. We know. This is for. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't like these little things hanging Mr. out there too long. Mr. Klein is here on behalf of Jackie Kaufman. If you have any questions, uh, they represented the club at the public hearings. Uh, I guess that's a question we can ask. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Come up with yeah. Thank you. So I guess the, as you're walking out, the question I would have is January one a problem or? You know, I'm sorry. I'll, introduce you yourself. Oh, oh, sorry, Jay Klein, Carmody Law for the applicants. Uh, you know, we, the reason why we asked for a year, even though the work is pretty minor, we just want to ensure that we have as much flexibility as possible. You know, I know the weather is getting better, but this is when the club is in use. Uh, so that's why we would anticipate that it wouldn't, these items might not get done until, you know, maybe the fall or maybe the start of the next season. It depends on, you know, when they have the time operationally uh, and then, of course, funding, how that all lines up. So, uh, you know, I think a year just gives everyone enough comfort that this will get done and we won't have to be back here right. again, hopefully. So. You're confident it will get done within? I'm confident it'll, it, it'll get done. One we'll way or the other, done. by this time <laughs> next year. Okay, <laughs> Give them, I'm fine with the year then. Okay. Great. Uh, everybody go with the year? Yeah. Yes. Motion to approve the year. Okay, okay. perfect. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Have a good night, everyone. You too. Uh, Last one. Flood damage prevention application number 351, Lynn Fleming, <coughs> application number 374, Hernandez, 15 River Road, Waverly Road, request for extension of time. This is the one. Yes, sorry. No, don't. <laughs> Read back to back. So yeah. Blurred so fine. this is, I guess, this is the one with the contractor dispute. There's a contractor dispute here that's been going on quite a while. They're in mediation. So the architect sent a letter noting that that's going to take a while. Then they have to get started, restarted up with the construction. So while the commission has granted other extensions here, this is certainly a unique circumstance in my book. This has been going on quite a while. This uh, dispute. We were, we were given an extension once or twice. That's correct. And I think I voted against both of them. Yep, this has been... This the well, if they don't get an extension, then what happens? They then they come have back. to come back to the commission for yeah. a, a new permit. Right. There's a guy with the swing in the backyard when everyone plays in front of you. Right, and the mud washes down the street. Right. Yeah, 15 Waverly. I think this might be uh, next to Jan Raymond's house, if I recall. Waverly so... <laughs> I don't know. What, uh, do you recall the extensions we gave? Were they six month increments? or? I mean, the, I think one was a year, one might have been six months. What so do you guys want to do on this one? I know Steve doesn't want to do one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> what choice? What the, yeah, this it sounds like the, the guys. Yeah. This is the house. Being uh, negligent. He's yeah, stuck in a crack. Okay. Why make his life more okay. difficult? Yeah. Six yeah, months? Six months was the last one. We'll give them six months this time to start to recommence okay. the work, yeah. which would be till April, uh, October twenty third. Okay, give October thirty first okay. <laughs> just to make it easy. Um, is that okay with everybody? Yes. Mm -hmm. All in favor for the extension? Okay, good. Steve. Steve is against. Steve's no. Okay. I don't know. Okay, uh, and then with deliberations on tonight. Tonight, the uh, two closed hearings. The first, uh, well, actually. Let's start from the, the bottom. Mr. Rowe, two Phillips place. Pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. Just to approve. with uh, well, we're, we're deliberating. So. <laughs> um, but uh, but just with those stipulations that you know yeah, keep, the, keep the wire free clear. from debris. Yeah. Okay. The second one was our regrading at Twenty Eight Hillcrest. Pretty easy. Yeah. I'm fine with that. And the other one, uh, Fred cannot convince. The applicant to withdraw 145 Old Kings Highway North. We won't 
prepare anything for next week, but on, you know, later in May we might have something. I if think, the yeah, there may be a def there's a deficiency now in the application, right? So, Correct. Uh, there are deficiency, those deficiencies, plural, would cause us to deny the application, but we would there's no rush you. to write, write this resolution. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So you rejected, you, you're technically rejected the application because it wasn't complete? Correct. Uh, they, once we see, is that a, assumed to be a complete application? Well, they, they still have some details to work out, the responses to the engineer, the details about the wetlands, et cetera. And certainly the hearing's closed, so they can't get that information to the commission. And the fact that no one showed up at the hearing to present, uh, we'll mention to the applicant that it's best that they withdraw. Thank you. All right, and then uh, project update. Project update. Um, Kensett's moving along. Uh, they're still out on Kensett Drive, constructing the final few condominiums. Old Town Hall homes. You have a, date, a finished date on that? You think? Within the end, by the end of the year. Mm, I yet. think they have one or two more okay. to do, so okay. it'll probably be next year for the okay. whole project. I haven't seen construction yet. in months. Uh, oh, they're out there off of uh, all the way at the end of right the end. Wakemore yeah. is where they're doing a couple okay. of years. Uh, Old Town Hall Homes, the foundation permit, Dave is currently reviewing it. Uh, there's a couple of tweaks they need to make. We expect that they'll get started on that foundation next week. And it's a, probably going to take a little over a year to construct the whole thing. What's with the EMT building getting relocated? Well, it, in terms of, there was a lot of conversation between the housing authority and the town in terms of the town's desire to have the paramedics stay where they are so they can charge in the vehicles overnight and stay there in, in that location. It was realized that with all the construction vehicles coming and going, that it's probably more prudent just to move them off site for a while till at least the building's framed and they're doing the interior work to move them back. So I just found out this morning that uh, the paramedics during the day are operating out of post 53, and during the evening they're staying in Stanford where they actually used to be running out of, just for a little while. Yeah. Right. Was, I believe that was your idea. Correct. What do you say? It was Commissioner Cunningham's idea to the evening hours. So. Yeah, they need a place to plug in the vehicles, nice. and that was really yeah. one of the- uh, Well, and a place to sleep, too. And a place to sleep. And not at night, so that's great. Right, and it's, right. so right. it'll make it easier for everyone. You don't have to worry about, you know, a truck delivering rocks or steel blocking yeah. in the paramedics, and it, it's all much smoother this way. All right, I have two more to ask. It, well, he's go ahead. Keep going. Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts. Uh, yeah. If you've been by there, you've seen that they put up the new six-foot green screen. Uh, the tents this year seem to me to be more enclosed than in the past. Much better. So Agreed. it's better. much better. There is a lot less debris just laying out there. Nope. And so that's gone well. There is, the neighbors have voiced some of their concerns directly to the scouts and their liaison, because the scouts, as part of the PNZ approval, have set up a liaison to try to address any neighbor concerns. So the drop-offs appear to be going much smoother. If you have any concerns, let me know and I can relay them on to the scouts. Jeremy, can we request a summary of the neighbor concerns from that liaison so we can just get a get a flavor for what the what the issues are? Yes, I think they do expect to give us one because I have spoken with a gentleman's name is Todd. Todd, yeah. Uh, and I've received some concerns and I've told neighbors if you have concerns go please go right to Todd. Because uh, he's the one that can fix them. I can't. Can you, can you run. just really quickly go over it's, some of the I think concerns. it's required. I think, I, yeah. I think, I think the report's did. required. I think one of the, yeah. some of the concerns <clears throat> dealt with, I'll call it routine traffic after an event. Uh, I think there was a scout meeting a few weeks ago. Yeah, so they where, weren't, weren't necessarily oh, wasn't exactly tied to the tag sale. Unrelated to the tag sale. Okay. Not supposed to have scout meetings done the tag sale. That's correct. It was before the tag sale. And so what was happening was a lot of parents were waiting to pick up. Some parents were, I think, maybe even waiting on West Avenue. Some parents had to turn around. So there was a little congestion at the end of a scout meeting, for example. Steve, you had one other one? 
the Oxford Club? Oxford, much better in terms of the erosion controls. I spoke about it with Dave earlier today that the contractor is doing a much better job keeping the dirt off. 100%. Will you, no, there's will a, you just keep an eye, I'm sorry, will you just keep an eye on Mansfield now? Because now that the entrance to the club members is on mm -hmm. Mansfield across from the Country Club Darien, they're, they're tracking a lot of dirt on the other side now. Yeah, we'll that's not out. construction related. Correct. Yeah. I mean, yep. it's, it's an unintended consequence of that. But More people coming and going down there. Sounds like uh, the completion date was. within six months? Yes. It's right. no, this it's is right. question. When you go on to the club property, a friend of mine lives right there. or immediately on the right-hand side, there's the White House. There's a White House there. Wasn't that thing coming down? No. From not which response. side you go on? You go in the, in the old, old entrance to the club, which is now the construction entrance to the club. As soon as you pull in, there's a, the old, original White House. It's with the, uh, the guys live yeah, to take yeah. care of the horses. I yeah. thought they were knocking that thing down. Uh, I think they're just <coughs> cleaning it out, up the outside. They haven't touched that thing. Yeah. No, yeah. No, I don't I recall. recall. For sure. yeah. uh, I can look into that. And then the, the, the dirt piles all over the place. And the greenhouse was never supposed to be touched. That's the one in the back. Behind the cattle tennis courts, that's the didn't touch it. But I thought the front house was supposed to do something. To yeah, they're supposed to clean it up. Nice the outside, no. No. no, just the facade. Very that's it. That's my. That's two. it. Yeah. I, I. Anything new on Palmer's? Uh, uh, no, uh, I did talk to Dave Keating today that uh, Federal Realty has been moving along with the Architectural Review Board on their sign program. The ARB looked at it last month, approved it. Uh, Federal Realty also met with Ed Gentile on certain other improvements. So they are continuing with every intent of, uh, you know, I'll call it September, November time frame, okay. breaking ground. Great, wow. nothing new on Palmer's and- uh, David I know is David still working with D State DOT and, and the Army Corps of Engineers. Yes, on the drainage Never ditch, yeah. which is- Yep. It's minor, but on the front door of the right train, um, post office, it says that as of January 20 something, that they're closing the office right. and moving it. Moving under Palmer. Did they, is that public knowledge that they're moving on trying to confirm? Yes. And that's what I was told, too. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anything else, guys? No, no other business? Next meeting is May so 7th. No, oh, yeah. The calendar. Sorry. May 7th, two weeks from tonight. And on that agenda is uh, the continuation. The big event will be the continuation of the Diller and Darien High School cross country path. Mm -hmm. uh, we continued it. Yeah. We continued it. Uh, Joe Canis just dropped off the revised plans. I posted them to the town website oh, great. earlier Thank today. You. I wasn't here for the, uh, And the other interesting one on May 7th will be improvements to the REWAC well. That is That property is located off of Lake Drive. So if you go down Lake Drive, there's a little driveway that leads off into the woods to a little shed that's back there and that's so they're looking to replace that so what that's that? town property who's there it's owned by aquarian water company oh, aquarian oh, water I've company wants to i lost my dog in that thing yeah it's very wooded it's just i did you found it found my dog oh, okay uh okay and then after may 7th you may got 14th the week after is the continuation of the zoning regulations uh, the MU zone and the regulation changes. Unfortunately, I'm not available on the 14th. Me too. That's two no's on the 14th. Can we get three? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do I hear? I'm in for three. Okay. Uh, Someone else can't make it. Let us know. Yeah, May 14th. No, I'm, late. I'm flying out yes. the morning of the 15th. Okay, good. We're good. Um, and then we, could you just give us a couple more dates? Sure. After that, uh, the next date after that would be May 28th, which is a very I'll full night. Right One, maybe anywhere from six to eight public hearings, uh, including the continuations we had tonight of 77 Leroy, one Tokenik Beach Drive, and four or five other hearings. So it's a very full night on May 28th. Is there, there, and there's no reason to do May 21st to clear uh, some items? I guess we can see how it goes. Okay, let's yeah, let's see how May seventh and fourteenth is. Is everybody around May twenty first for maybe a quick deliberation meeting, general meeting? No, just yeah. to clear the decks. Sure. 
Okay. Okay. Well, so yeah, that's that potential. Possible. Perfect. Okay. That'd Great. Special meeting. Everybody good? Yep. So, uh, could I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Thank you. I will. Thank you. It is 9:31. Thank you, TV 79. We are okay. off the record.